Hi everyone, we're back again with another class of antibiotics within our study series. Today we're going to speak about aminoglycosides and a glycopeptide. So let's get started. Aminoglycosides are very powerful. They're very strong antibiotics. So they work similarly to tetracycline and they inhibit protein synthesis. Because they're such strong anti antibiotics, we use them for serious infections. So we use them for things like meningitis, MRSA, which is methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Now, a way for you to remember the names of the aminoglycosides, I have a memory tip here for you, and it's G NATS. G for gentamicin, N for neomycin, A for amikacin, T for topromycin, S for streptomycin. And if you will look, you will see they all end in either MYCIN or MICIN, with amikacin here being the outlier. It just ends in CIN. Because aminoglycosides can have some very serious side effects, we typically, we prefer to give them by the intravenous or intramuscular route. The only outlier to that is neomycin. And neomycin is typically given by the oral route and is also sometimes um, given as an ointment and is also given in, in combination ointment um, medications. So that's, that's, that's the only outlier, neomycin. So aminoglycosides have some very serious side effects. So earlier I told you, you can remember the names of the aminoglycosides using GNAT. So to remember the side effects, the memory tip that I have is not. And for nephrotoxicity, O for ototoxicity, and T for teratogenic. And guys, if you're learning something new here or you're getting value from this study session, please like the video, hit the subscribe button, and turn the notification bell on so you, you would know the next time that I upload a video. So let's go on. So nephrotoxicity, we need to monitor our client's urine output because a urine output of less than 30 ml per hour means your kidneys are having problems. We also need to monitor our BUN and creatinine values. Those are our renal function values. And particularly what we are looking for is an increasing BUN and creatinine because it means our kidneys are being seriously affected by this aminoglycoside. And what we're gonna do as we see the BUN and creatinine start to increase, we're gonna bring that to the attention of our healthcare provider. Ototoxicity damages the eighth cranial nerve. So some of the things that we're gonna do, we're gonna monitor our client for dizziness because they may be having vertigo. And we're gonna check our client's balance. We wanna see if they're unsteady on their feet, if they're getting wobbly on their feet because they may be experiencing ataxia. And the client may also complain of ringing in the ears, and that's tinnitus. So we're looking out for vertigo, ataxia, and tinnitus. We also want to avoid giving loop diuretics with aminoglycosides because it increases the ototoxicity and the potential for your, your client to have the side effect of ototoxicity. Which... Aminoglycosides are teratogenic, so we do not administer to pregnant clients because it may cause deafness in the newborn. We also do not give aminoglycosides to clients with neuromuscular disease like myasthenia gravis. Keep in mind though, muscle pain is a normal side effect of aminoglycosides, but we're not gonna give it to somebody that has a neuromuscular disorder, right? So if your client complains of muscle pain and we know they don't have any kind of disorder, we'll just let them know that that's normal. 
The other, the other antibiotic we're going to speak about is a glycopeptide, vancomycin. Vancomycin is a very strong antibiotic. It treats serious infections like MRSA, methicillin resistance, Staphylococcus aureus, Clostridium difficile diarrhea, and sepsis. Vancomycin is irritating to blood vessels and destroys tissues if it extravasates. So while we have our client with an IV infusion of vancomycin, we need to monitor that site every 30 minutes and we're looking for pain, we're looking for swelling, and we're looking for redness. So because of this, it is preferred that we administer vancomycin through a peripherally inserted central catheter, a PICC line. And we should also use an infusion pump because we do not want vancomycin to be infused too rapidly. Vancomycin also crosses the placenta. The side effects of vancomycin, we have a memory tip as well, not nephrotoxicity, ototoxicity, and thrombophlebitis. So we need to monitor our IV sites at least every 30 minutes while we're given vancomycin. A peculiar effect of vancomycin is something called red man syndrome. And it's a result of a rapid infusion of vancomycin. So the signs and symptoms include a sudden onset of low blood pressure. So your client would suddenly have hypotension. They will be flushed, they may be itchy, and they will have a red rash on their face. And the memory tip here, they'll have the rash on the face and the neck, the chest, and the extremities. And what we're gonna do for this if our client is experiencing red man syndrome, we're going to immediately stop the infusion. And we're gonna administer an antihistamine to help our client with this itchy flush feeling that they may be having. And what we're gonna do after we've stopped and we've treated this, we're have to make sure that we infuse the vancomycin slowly, right? Because this, remember, red man syndrome results from a rapid infusion, right? So we're going to infuse it slowly over at least one hour, at least 60 minutes, right? Please be mindful that red man syndrome is not an allergic reaction right? Red man syndrome is not an allergic reaction. An allergic reaction will typically have hives, angioedema, and your client may actually be wheezing if it's an allergic reaction. But if you look at the signs and symptoms here, we are not having any of that, right? So red man syndrome is not an allergic reaction. Because aminoglycosides and vancomycin has such powerful side effects, we do not want to give these medications together, right? So we don't want to give other aminoglycosides with vancomycin. And one of the things that we need to do, we need to monitor the the level of the drug concentration in the client's blood. We want to know how much medication does this client have in their body. And we do this because we want to make sure the levels are not toxic, but we also want to make sure that the levels are therapeutic, right? That they're helping our client. We don't want to have the medication become toxic in the body and affects our client's hearing and their kidneys. So what we do, we measure the peak and trough levels. So we, we give the first dose, and remember with all antibiotics, before we give the first dose, we do the culture and sensitivity, right? So we're gonna administer medication, and then approximately 30 minutes later, if we give it by the IV route, we're going to draw the peak, right? That would be the peak level draw. And maybe about 15 minutes or so, 15 to 30 minutes before we give the next dose, right before we give the next dose, we're gonna measure the trough level 
right? So, and again, we do the peak and trough because we want to confirm that the levels are not toxic to our client and that the levels are actually therapeutic for our clients. Okay, so that's all the notes that I have for you today. Thank you for studying with me. And if you got value for this video, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can know the next time that I upload a video. Again, thank you for studying with me. Take care, be well. Bye-bye.